Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. This is Reology with DVD. Uh, how are you doing? In honor of Mother Wendy. And yes, 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 yes. Shout out to Mother Wendy. And I don't call her mother because we are only 10 years in age apart. I don't call her mother because she is old enough to be my mother. I call her mother because she created <laughs> the block of spirit. I give her her props and her credit. And I know she is going through it right now. And the thing about it is all of this mess about Kevin getting the overpayment. It just disturbs my spirit. So, back when I first started my channel, I had been seeing things about her by other bloggers, top bloggers, top tier bloggers, dragging her name through the mud, yet at the same time exposing her alleged condition, which is dementia. So, acting as if she didn't contribute to the blogosphere life that you live and, you know, being able to spread the tea. I'm not saying that she is the original person to ever spread the tea. <laughs> I'm saying the way she did it makes her original. I could see people hating her, hating on her, and knowing what she was going through with Kevin and, um, all the other things about her um, just made me say, hey, you know, I'm not going to be that type of content creator. I am going to give her her flowers. And that's why you hear me say, in honor of Mother Wendy. That's neither here nor there. I am here to talk about the Love and Marriage DC reunion special. Baby, when I tell you, <laughs> they came in hot on this reunion. Now, the only thing about this with them coming in hot, and then I posted it on Twitter, where can this show go from here? Now, I'm going to be sprinkling in just a little bit of salt and tea and a little sprinkle of pepper, all the seasonings, about this little interview that Jamie and Arena had with DJ Richie Scott. Everybody, everybody is saying there's no coming back from the situation they're in. And, of course, we know that Miss uh, Winter Harris has quit. And when I tell you that Jamie and Arena have a deep, 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 deep disdain for Winter, it's almost as if... I'm watching a train wreck, but I can't stop. <laughs> and that's on the real, but here we go. The episode opens up, and like I said, Arena and Ashley are still going at it. And the way people need to stop talking about how Andy Cohen loses control in his interviews, or I mean, in his reunions. Baby, you're talking about lost control right here. <laughs> right here. That's a prime example of losing control. <laughs> oh, by the way, shout out to uh, Ashley for putting that Lumi on display that all over body deodorant. Because she said, look, baby, I might get into an argument with these bitches out here on this stage, but I ain't going to be merced. <laughs> and by the way, Lumi helps control cuckoo sweat as well cuckoo shoot talking about a person who is a user of the natural deodorants there you go girl i i can see it this is clear while i'm anyway let's need a handle there um i forgot to mention that cliff and as they were, we are going to the break i know i said that the episode opened up with arena and ashley going in but that is the first scene of them coming back to the couch. But as they're leaving the couch for lunch, of course, Cliff and uh, many sides, Kit Kat are still arguing. And I really think that 
Kit Kat went down the wrong road. Making live threats because I keep telling you, Jamie is a former detective. He knows how to put in ways to make you look guilty. So he completely said what that looked like threatening this man on TV. So, of course, you know, him having that detective mindset, he's going to look at it like, yeah, something happens to Cliff. Even though this has been over a year ago, let me mention again, and we are in season three. So that means that season two didn't get a uh, a reunion. But in our actuality, this is season two. And remember what Winter said about A, B, and C. So he can completely consider this one season and he don't have to pay them for two seasons. So. But why does he care about paying them for two or three seasons if he's only paying them $2,500 an episode? Now, mind you, Arena says they are only cordial with Joy and Cliff from the whole entire cast. Jamie said that he would prefer if they would bring in new people even though Ashley is good for TV. Now, I want to put that some, put that on your mind now. Put something on your mind. You want someone else instead of established talent to be on your show. Well, I tell you one thing. Sure, that must have been a hot, stomping pile of dog doo-doo that they all stepped in, in my opinion, to keep them from not even being able to be cordial enough to film together. Baby, even Melody, before she breached her limits in, continued to friend with Motel Hotel. And, baby, we thought he had done the most, the most, the most that you could do to a person. But these people are not even willing to film each- with each other. You talking about somebody who has ruined this franchise. This cast right here. Cast, I said. I didn't say Winter. I didn't say Arena. I didn't say Jamie. I didn't say Mini Size Kit Kat. I didn't say uh, Joy and Cliff. And the side stars, uh, Shirella Black and... uh, Alicia, and who else is a side star? I think I got them. Yusha. <laughs> I did not say that they ruined the show. I said the damn cast. And I said what the fuck I said. So, in Winter's room, because they're all speaking in their dressing rooms at this point. In Winter's dressing room, she said something that was kind of you know, taking sides. Now, remember, she's supposed to be middle of the road. But it's nothing that Cliff did any more antagonistic, in my opinion, than what Minister's Kit Kit did. Now that she's cool with them, she's wearing the rose-colored glasses. That's not middle of the road. They both played a part in this argument, in my opinion. And the shade of sass, Ashley said. And run better calm down before their wigs slip but Now, when I say later on in this episode, I felt differently about the mother challenge thing. It was weird to me to see another mother sit there and say that she sits there and drinks all day and not take care of her children. I, ugh, that was... That was, I guess, yeah, I guess that would be a, a considered one of those things you can't come back from. Now, we're going to talk about the Christmas Eve party real quick, and I'm going to just breeze right on past this. Simple as that, Carlos asked um, Joy May, what made her attend the Christmas Eve party. She said Arena, and I really don't think Arena invited her for them to go at it. But Joy, let me let me hit you right in your kisser. You were definitely, and I saw that the moment that that episode aired, you were definitely out of line for not coming into that woman's house speaking. Speaking of not coming into my house and speaking, 
the last video where I had the nice little thumbnail scrappy do fighting cliff, I got 400 views on the video, but only 30 likes. The likes are not matching. When you enter my home, like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell button so you can be notified when I upload a video. Just like. So, 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 so. I, now I see what Joy's problem is. Joy has a little bit of Ashley Darby in her. You know, that like that aftermath reaction. And I think that's what uh, DJ Pint Size and Ashley were saying about the petties. You had time to confront us. So now, after they realized that Ashley, and they hashed it out about Ashley did apologize, it's like Joy was saying, well, you know, it's a little too late. And Arena was honest. She did say that she felt like um, Ashley's apology was sincere. I did. Not in the moment, because it seemed like it was a backhanded sideways apology. And so, in that moment, Joy said under her breath, like it's sweet. So, now I see where that all came up. And definitely, definitely, I was not feeling joy because everything had calmed down. And there she was, like, I'm just sweet. Like, it's sweet. And she actually went right back to firecracker mode. And there we go. She brings her ready to love. Ask any female from ready to love. He loves to argue with women. Okay. Now, let me say this about Ready to Love. I am a watcher of Ready to Love. I know it took you so long to get to me saying one of me. Oh, now I'm ready. I'm ready to love. Baby, when I tell you that it was nothing on during the panty and that show was still airing, and me and my little baby, we just saying the thing. So, of course, I wasn't in her watch the show, but, you know, but baby, my baby loved that thing song. And we sang it together just like we did with sisters. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. The point is, my analysis here is, I don't recall, <laughs> I don't recall his antagonistic behavior. All I remember is what happened between he and Dakia. And boy, I tell you right now, the petties have just really side with themselves with me from Ready to Love because of the way they did Dakia. So past that, I can't even remember anything else about them except for how devilish she, devilish, am I saying that right? Like, uh, heavenly. People call her devilishly. Yeah, annoying they were. It was, after that, it was just downhill for them for me. So, I don't really see it for the petties. I try. <laughs> and I try. However, let me say this, and I'll say it again. That man posed no threat to Ashley. Period. Dot. Dot. Dash. Shout out to Chanel Amon. If you know, then you know. She used to always say, period dot. <laughs> if she said something, baby, and she read a bit now, it was a period dot. <laughs> Even though that's not a saying she made up. We've been we've been saying that since the nineties in the ship. But the way she the way she says it, Chanel's own Chanel's um, Chanel Amon owns that. So now it's time for them to name names on the people who said that Cliff was petty from Ready to Love. I mean, that name really suits him. Petty. Petty, petty, petty. Yes, I said before, the hand moment, and you want me to get like this, and you want me to get like this. That was 
what we call medicine. However, again, I don't see it, Ashley. You can't make me see it no matter how many times you tweet that he was antagonizing you. I don't see it. By the way, DJ Richard Sky saw it from Ashley's perspective. You know, he said what he would do if he was a man. He told Irena and um, Jamie that, and they weren't seeing his explanation, just like I don't see his explanation. The man's arms were crossed. I don't deem anybody a threat to fucking me. If, <laughs> I, I cussed then, okay? I don't deem anybody a threat to me with crossed arms and talking to me with crossed arms. If you are arguing with me and your arms are crossed, that is, let me tell you psychologically what that means. In case we're not going by psychology here. In case we're just going by man arguing with woman, let's go psychologically. When somebody crosses their arms, that means just like when a dog is wagging its tail, that means that they are trying to reduce tension and a threat. So had she hit him, let me get a scenario the way it, it will be from a psychological standpoint. Had she hit him, then he wouldn't would have been at a disadvantage, even being that she's a woman. Why? Due to the simple fact that his arms were crossed. He would have literally had to come out of his stance and hit her back had she hit him first. And coming out of that stance, that would have actually given security time to break them up and he wouldn't have been able to possibly get his lick back. I'm speaking in a perspective, like I said, not man, female, I'm talking adversaries here. I definitely do not advocate for men to hit women. Like I've told you before, if a man hit me, it's over clover. I'm going to pick something up. <laughs> That's a fact. I don't consider anyone a threat to me if your arms are folded. I don't care how heated the argument is. So the thing that Andy and um, Carlos does that I hate, you bring an innocent party that does not have to, anything to do with the conversation between the two adversaries, and you bring in a third party. What is that third party supposed to do exactly? So he asked him right now. Uh, Raina, do you feel that at that moment, um, Joy or Ashley was wrong because it was a team, Joy and it was a team, Ashley back in the day. At that time, during that Christmas party, I was definitely team Ashley because it started off wrong when Joy first came to the doggone party and then speak to the lady. Now, I saw Ashley's point from A to B there. It's up in the stuff from here to here. Then... Arena brings up something that had absolutely nothing to do with that argument that we saw on TV. She said, Arena had no business. I'm sorry. Arena said that um, Ashley had no business telling people that um, Cliff and Joy, people, and by people I mean Alicia, that Cliff and Joy were married. And you can't tell me that she didn't tell quick, so that would be people. Even still. That's not a neutral answer. A neutral answer would have been, Joy was wrong for coming in that later house and not speaking and not picking up on where the argument originally came from because remember, Joy, uh, Joy did actually say that Ashley apologized to her, right? And Ashley had no idea that she was even coming. I wanted them to have a conversation and she had no business saying that that lady was married. I'm sorry, married. So, here's where what I was talking about before about them Ashley and Arena starts to go in. Completely forget about the conversation about Joy and make it about themselves. That's why Carlos shouldn't have brought Arena into that conversation at that moment. Now, Arena gets her gander up and she starts hurling insults at Ashley. Yes, she did. 
and she started really insulting. And Ashley's like, what is your problem with me? Why are you so mad at me? Why are you so angry at me? You going from, you know, zero to 100 for nothing. And then Arena says, I planned on you having a conversation with her. I didn't plan on you telling her who brought on the show and all this and that. And then there's that. <sighs> Boy, when I tell you... <laughs> That big neutral between these people on this show is the most difficult thing to do. And that, even though it's the most difficult thing to do, it is the best thing to do because everybody at some point has a point. Pun intended. Arena calls her childish. Yes, because that was a childish move, Ashley, when you decided that you was going to say, back up off me. And the thing you you went and go check on her first. Arena says several times that she checked on Joy first, only because she saw her first. What was she going to do? Knock people over like you were knocking people over in that little Christmas dress? <laughs> Trying to get to you? What was she supposed to do? And I agree, she went, Arena literally was trying to calm things down. And I was on Ashley's side up until she pushed Arena and told her, you checked on her first. That was weird childish energy. I'm letting this play here because I don't understand what the F they're saying. And at, at right about to show her behind to go get the D to hand it to Winter. They called her the toxic D and, and she earned it, baby. Now they're all talking at once. So, right there, like I said, I'm letting them handle that because I didn't understand anything they were saying. I just know that Arena gave her the toxic D back and she's about to show her whole ass. But, literally, not figurative. I mean, when she got up, she almost showed her ass. Then, after Winter said what she said, that's when Joy said, but it was effed up. You know, being that Ashley was consistent. Yeah, Ashley behavior is definitely consistent. Now, Joy, I guess they'll talk about that in part three of the reunion, which it should not be. But Joy, 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 down in my heart. Joy, 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 down in my heart. Girl, let me tell you something right here. Now, you know doggone well, as anybody else knows, that... Uh, Ashley had come into a good place with you before y'all went to that store. Now, I said what I said. Now. Oh, by the way, I really, literally don't understand what Quick is saying. So, I think Arena is trying to say that Ashley has a problem with Jamie because they were getting along up until the point after Christmas, they were hugging. I heard Quick say something about hugging. But when I tell you, I definitely didn't understand what Scrappy was saying. <laughs> Scrappy never do. I didn't understand what he was saying. But I'm gleaning from this conversation that everybody was cool up until when Ashley and Jamie were going back and forth on Twitter. And baby, they were. Everybody that wasn't seeing the show that was begging for, the, yeah, again, I'm going to bring it up, begging for the show to come back because we were wondering what had happened between the couples. Now, if you can recall, if you were on Twitter during that time around 2023, you could realize that there was cracks in the foundation of this friendship. Okay, so I'm seeing and trying to make this understanding. It was a tweet that happened between 
Jamie, and Angela. Angela is the same age as little Jamie. And instead of Jamie confronting the Silvers, he started directing the tweets directly to Angela, who is really her assistant, but Jamie was throwing off on her like she was the help. So I'm going to read you the tweets because sometimes Twitter gets me confused because Twitter goes, instead of going down to bottom, <laughs> it goes bottom to up. So the tweet starts, what I can see from the top is, girl, get the F out of here. I have, before I have you homeless, I am not the one, trust me. And then Ashley goes, and this is March 2023. Now, mind you, I'm following them at this time. I don't remember these tweets verbatim, but I do remember something of this conversation. And this is Lois F. of y'all. You know, Falk or whatever. And James says, what? I'm gone, man. And somebody, I don't see Ashley or Quick, not Ashley or Quick or Jamie's face here. Maybe that was Angela because they blurred it out. It says, this is real life, not for online giggles and likes. Okay, so after that, according to Jamie, the people dragged Ashley because she said something to little Jamie right behind that. And then Arena says that, no, Ashley said to Arena that um, she apologized to her and came to her about whatever it was that she said about Lil Jamie. And Big Jamie said that it was because she was getting dragged. I don't think so. I think she regretted what she said because regardless as to what people think about Ashley, I really think genuinely thought she gen genuinely cared for Lil Jamie and so did the audience. I mean he endeared my spirit because I felt the signs of depression coming from it. And I didn't think it was attention. I didn't think it was attention seeking behavior. Now Ashley, I think she brought up the kids first though, because she did say that Ashley um at least she didn't bring her kids on TV for a storyline. Ashley said that to Arena and Jamie. So Ashley gets piped up and she's like, You know, motherfucker, well, she, you keep calling her my housekeeper, man. You know she's my motherfucker's assistant. And if I said something about your children, then you'd be pissed off. Stop right there. Hard stop. She didn't say anything about the children. Is Angela supposed to be like a child to you or something? Now, if my memory serves me correctly, maybe she's like a cousin or something. Maybe they're related. I don't remember, but that's neither here nor there. She brought up the children first. So it's still a kid versus an assistant thing coming here. It's just like it related to Ashley in some sort of way. But anyway, she says, Amrana says, you know, she's talking about you like a dog. She put this in text messages. She says that you all don't pay her. And then Ashley says, why the fuck would I pay her when I provide her free room and board? Now, I can speak to this personally. We had our own built-in nanny growing up. Yes, 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 yes. The middle class, the lower middle class people of America in our home, we had my first cousin come here and take care of my mom. Had my first cousin come here and take care of us. Me and my sister. And back then, she was only 22 years old. She took care of us, yes. And she did everything that this assistant does. And my mother paid her. I want, she, my mother paid her as well. She did have free room, but my mother also paid her. So, and she was our relative, our true relative, my mother's niece. <laughs> so, but she... Did everything a nanny would do. She kept this house clean, hot top to bottom. She kept us clean. I mean, she just literally was that parent figure to us while my mother and father were at work. So, yeah, I don't see her point here. If she's really her assistant, she provides a free room, board, and food. 
yes, you know, pay them like you would pay, you know, a, a nanny that wasn't related to you. But, yeah, you can negotiate some type of pay or some type of conversation. Because my mother wanted her niece to feel like it was fair for her to stay here or uh, get uh, get some kind of fair compensation. So they negotiated on, you know, so she can have her own things outside of me and my sister. So she wanted her to, you know, feel at home, but yet and still have her own things and she was able to buy things for herself, staying here, taking care of us. I just don't see why she don't think that she could have gave her some type of compensation. I don't get that right there. Now, this is where Raina went left. Then she go left. What she say? Now, she's in the house scrubbing the floors and shit like Cinderella and taking care of your kids while you on the damn couch too drunk to take care of them during the, during the day. Whoa. What? Why did you say that? But, again, Arena did say Angela said that. But still, still, that was out of line. And, baby, right here, Ashley snaps. And she said, I have never, never said anything disrespectful about, about your children. Arena says, yes, I understand that. Children at that age group can be ungrateful. And that's when S snaps back and says, but your children have said plenty of things about you. But again, Angela is not their kid, so I don't understand the correlation of bringing up each other's children here. But Arena says that proves the point about the tweet. Yes, at this point, point of no return, Ashley says, Arena acts like she wants to get nook if you book boy nook if you book boy nook if you book. And Ashley acts like she wants to get booked too and says look 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 what you gonna do what you gonna do what you gonna do with Raina? <laughs> oh baby, Carlo in that no shirt. If if he had a had on a shirt, maybe he would have been able to mediate properly. So Raina says. That she has awards and trophies. So what is she going to do? And that's when Ashley says, all talk, no action. Action. And holds up her little action sign. Now, I still don't know what that thing is called. You know, you click the thing and it says action. The Brook Ashley. <laughs> the thing you said, take what? The Brook Ashley used to snap that thing down when she started her show. I wonder if she, I hadn't seen Brooke do that in a while. Yeah. I, I call it the take one thing. How about that? The take. So they come back from commercial and they are still arguing. And I can see where Ashley is genuinely hurt in this moment because she says, you know, I genuinely thought that you were a friend and you fake as fuck. Now, a lot of people probably wouldn't see that, but I did. I do feel like she was hurt by them not being friends anymore. I do. And, of course, Arena feels like a lot of people in the audience feel that Ashley is jealous of their friendship. By this point, by the time, a whole year later, by the time the, um, why don't any of these men have on side? No, no. No, no. Anyway, I feel like the water was already under the bridge and over the bridge and had crossed the bridge and things had deteriorated from this point on. So I think the friendships were already out the window by the time this doggone reunion was taken. You're jealous of the couples hanging out. Your boy, your husband is always at work. Now, I, hey, I'm with you when you're right there. You are saying that DJ Kit Kat is always at work. And I don't mean no rugged size Kit Kat. I mean Kit Kat Mini. Ashley and the running is that in? No. Before he even got it out. So, like I said, deteriorated.
Joy said that she'd rather have an honest enemy than a fake-ass friend. Now, I'm with her with that. I'm with you when you're right on that. Now, I'm with Cliff. I mean, I'm with uh, DJ Pine Size when he's right. He did say this one moment turned the whole season to the left because of that incident at the uh, event. Shout out to Tisha at the uh, Wizards game in the Skybox. And, yes, it did, because that led to the disagreements on and on and on about Cliff being a mean girl. Ashley said she repeatedly told production not to bring them there, but, of course, you know Mr. King Size, the king of all entertainment, he said he's going to... He had to step in there and like, you know, this is a show. We got a show to do. Now, I'm with him with it right now. And that's how I left. But, yeah, I'm with him right there. Uh, Raina um, did say Ashley has a problem taking accountability. And right here she did. She took accountability for walking over to Cliff in the skybox once her and Joy had had their conversation. Again. I'm playing the devil's advocate all through this episode. Yes, Joy had a point there. So in this moment, I see Joy's point. You were the antagonizer. Then that's when Ashley says, okay, whatever. You know she's being totally sarcastic. But, you know, it's her, her whole total point is she did not want the petties at her event. Her point is that never would have happened had they not come to the event, right? And I can see somewhat of what she's saying there, but we all know that this was a production thing here. It wasn't like that the Peters were being a production puppet. It was like, yeah, maybe they wanted their $2,500 that day. So Cliff had to admit that he was trying to get a rise out of out of her when the question was asked. When you doing like this, you doing like that, yeah, you could clearly see that he was being facetious. I mean, that wasn't anything that he really could have denied. I do that all the time. I'm a queen of sarcasm, so I definitely feel what he was doing. You know, us sarcastic people can see what the other sarcastic person is doing, even though we may not be involved. I clearly can see that's what he was doing. So, the king of deflection, DJ Harris Pint, says that he still felt like quick um, that Clifton was antagonizing his wife. And then Carlos tries to keep him honest, like he did with Cliff, and say, do you see your wife being wrong at some point during this season? Well, everybody's wrong. Everybody's wrong. King of Deflection. Your wife. Your wife started a lot of shit, DJ Half Pint. But you weren't there to know everything she did now, were you? Because you always work it. When Ashley says she's going to take accountability for something, Irina falls out. See, now Irina Miller. See that? When you fall out like that, and somebody is talking and they trying to hold themselves. Accountable something, just let them do that in the moment. Let them have their moment, whether you agree or not. Don't go falling out loud on the damn couch because you're starting something. And that's when Ashley dropped right back in and said, Shut your fuck ass up. See? It wouldn't have happened had you not fell, fell out on the couch. Now, Rhino says, I got to write this down. See? You're being funny, Rhino. So now it's time for the friends of the show. And now it's about to be one to show just like it was when she came on first season. She's about to take off. <laughs> and once it says that, first of all, she said that he was fake deep. Now I'm good when she right. All of these whole tippy types. Mm-mm. Girl, like Alex over there on uh, some house. Mm-mm. Child, you have to look out for them. And the doctors came out as well. I'm talking about Shabrilla. 
looked nice. Thank goodness she did not have one that big curly weave. Now, I wasn't pleased with this one either, but at the same time, at least it wasn't a big curly one, okay? Now, mind you, Letitia Pearson from the Bell Collective and Winter had a back and forth on the social media. Yes, honey. Carlos stars get into it with each other across the show. Mm-hmm. Go over there and check it out. And I was like, say what now? She said, does she believe you should? Now, favorite people just started going in on the teacher. They were like, girl, stop. Girl, you want to talk. Girl, we understand where you coming from because, girl, don't nobody know where Yusha is coming from with you because you are male-centered. And when they call Letitia Pearson from the Bell Collective male-centered, I guess you could say that since how her relationship is going on the show with that good Glenn. Deep Glenn. Mm-hmm. I'm with them when they write, honey. But one of them got her dramatic ass up and sat way over there with... Uh, Quick and uh, Ashley. Now, now, girl, during this reunion, you could have sat by the man. And you, you weren't sitting close. We know the relationship was old. We know that it turned sour because he had a thing for Joy. And like I said, I kind of figured it out. <laughs> I figured it out through the interviews that she was giving because she was talking as if they had broken up before this air, and it was hard for her to keep it in because things had already transpired because, like, remember, this is over a year old. So we're seeing just the outcome of this reunion special that was actually filmed in August 2023. Baby, when I tell you this is the foolishness right here. Winter brings up how she actually fell in love with him and all he said, well, that's good. Let's stand on that, baby. That's why you never, ever, 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 tell the man you love him first. Ever, ever. I'm not sure if I said it right. It's thank you for saying that to me. I'm going to let you stand on it. Either way it goes, never, ever, 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 ever tell them you love him first. So when he told her that, um, Carlos asked him, asked him, did you start seeing signs after that? She was like, yes, that's when I started noticing something. Oh, by the way, let me take back my best dress for quick. You should actually is the best dress. You should look nice, baby. He was wearing that suit. It was tailored for him nice. He had a nice tie. Like my dad used to wear paisley. And the paisley... A handkerchief in the pocket to match. Yes, yes, yes. He looked like a older Fonsworth Bentley back in the day. And then he had on socks. He looked like from G's to gents, straight up. Baby, this girl pulls out the hourglass and says, I don't have a lot of time for this. We're going to discuss this and got 10 minutes. And they put the hourglass on the table from the floor. The thing about it is, with Winter, she can be a bit dramatic, like I said. <laughs> but I am feeling her with these whole tippy type dudes, right? Like I told you, like finesse, try to finesse you out your panties or try to finesse you into doing something that you're not ready for. Even though she told him she loved him first. But he was trying to get the panty drops. You think you're going to get my panty? Child, I'm with you when you write on that one winter. Points for winter. So she named a few things that bothered her about him. The whole standing up for joy, one of them. And then she said that he was being opportunistic, which is a huge red flag, right? However, this is what... Letitia Pearson also said, we all come on these shows to promote our stuff. Yes, you do. But not so much when you're a side character. Remember what Carlos said when he introduced them. Friends of the show. 
If she said he was genuinely trying to get to know her, then Winter busted. You told one of our producers that Winter was a good opportunity. Now, this is not saying to me at all that he didn't have some sort of feelings for her, but I believe, this is what I believe. I believe that once he met her through Black and Shirella, his life for her probably intensified once he found out that he could be a part of the show. I'm just saying, that's my opinion. He said that opportunity for a wife. He might have said that too, but like I said, it that he can appear on this show is with the man. <laughs> he got with us though when he said, Carlo, I respected her when she was talking. Do the same for me. Now I'm with you when you're right now. One point for Yusha. Now Winter sounded like me when she said that. He think he's deep, but he's about as deep as a puddle. Mine, as I always say, you're shallow, but you're about as shallow as a, I sometimes say, like a, a thin sheet of ice. <laughs> I may say a puddle. I may say a stream. So I would have with that one because I've said that something similar to, to one of my girlfriends before. Thank you, deep. He keeps insisting that he meant for a wife. Okay, Yusha, this girl don't pull the fingernail file out. I'm from between her titties, no less. Child, I can't make this stuff up. He said Black and Sherelle know him. They know him to be honest about actually wanting a wife. Winter insists that she heard him say opportunity and not add the word wife on the end. Now, I don't know Winter to be a straight up life. Now can she kind of omit? Yes. But in this moment I think she's telling the truth. So he was saying that he wears his brand, so why would he need to see her as an opportunity? It's uh 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 contrary my friend. How irritated were you when we didn't show your socks? The producers had already told you they weren't ready to introduce your brand yet. No, he couldn't wait. Hmm. Yes, I'm seeing the opportunistic tendencies here. So, boy, Sherelle, whether intentionally or unintentionally, throws that dog on. She throws him under the bus, rolls right over him, right? Because she says that she's only known him to be a hustler, trying to get out there. But that's not why. So, in order to wrap things up, Winter clears the room by saying that he auditioned for Ready to Love. And his point was, Yusha's point was, hey, I might have auditioned for Ready to Love, but I thought I was being honest. And I'm with you, Sean, that. I think he should, after everything that Winter had been through, I think she needs to know that that's what had happened. Maybe not telling him the her the whole details about Joy. She said there there was no jealousy there. I don't think it was some je any jealousy there. I don't think she was jealous of Joy at all. But I do think that made her hyper aware and somewhat sensitive to him taking up for Joy. And pretty much Sherelle begged him up, the weird things that happen <laughs> when you do reviews late at night. You, you hear everything, right? And um, it comes back on, and they're still going at it, and they about to wrap each other up, it looks like, because she said he needs to leave, and he said, go get your broom. Ooh, 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 ooh. I wonder what she's going to say after that. Anyway, the episode ends. They're coming back to my channel for reunion Part three, they could have wrapped this up in two. However, I do know that even though that was almost two years ago when this show was taped for the actual season, it's almost really been a whole entire year 
for the ring. This is absolutely positively ridiculous. Poor scheduling and poor promotion. This show, to me, at that time, was actually too damn good to run in the ground and keep them on hold like this. Foolishness. For $2,500? Yeah. With all those businesses they had, I mean, they could have made $2,500 according to Quick in 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. That's where I'm going to close. It has took me all damn day to do this video because my camera is not cooperating. That's neither here nor there. Not your problem. Come on in for the recap anyway. I know there's out there. And it's something your crew. And something your crew. Come on in. <laughs> you get commercial free entertainment. And like I said, I'm going to close there. Please like and comment. Subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell button so you will be notified when I upload a video. And as I do when I close, I'm going to chunk them up. To six. Let me just say, I definitely enjoyed this reunion episode.